Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I'd like to share with you a little bit about the song Scarborough Fair. You know the song from Simon and Garfunkel's popular version, but in fact, it's a really old song. It's a song from the medieval times in medieval England in which it was a 45 day long sort of festival, all sorts of vegetables and herbs and animals and entertainment and artisans. And it would just be this really fun place to gather and just experience the fruit of the earth. And in that festival, I'm sure that there was these four herbs that they keep repeating throughout the song, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. When I was looking at the song, I thought to myself, wow, this is really strange, because what does he actually, why does he keep going over these verbs? What does it mean? And as I started to research it, I found out that they really do have a meaning and it really sheds a lot of light into what this song is about. So today on this vlog, I'd like to take you through my garden, show you these herbs, explain to you a little bit about what their meaning was in the medieval ages, and then put it in the context of the song so that we can have a deeper understanding of what he's talking about and understand the secret or the hidden message behind what this guy is saying. Let's go into the garden, check them out. Back in the medieval days, herbs and flowers were really important to people. They had meanings, they had virtues associated with them, and they even were thought to have mystical power. Without modern medicine, people were totally reliant on the natural properties of herbs. They'd make a concoction of certain herbs to soothe certain ailments. Maybe we can assume that this combination of herbs that the singer is singing about has some sort of meaning. But what is it? Parsley. A lot of people like to cook with parsley as a nice flavor in food, or sometimes you'll just find it kind of as a decoration on your plate. But really, this had a use. When you chew on it, it would eliminate your bad odor. In the medieval times, they believed that each herb had a secret power. The power of parsley was to eliminate bad feelings as it was bad odors. Maybe here, the singer is wishing to his lost love that she doesn't feel so bad that he's not with her anymore. This is the glorious sage bush that we have. Sage has so many healing properties. Sage comes from the word salvere, which is salvation. The Romans used to say that it was a herb of longevity, long life. And in the medieval times, they were using the Celtic interpretation, which was strength and courage. Maybe here the singer is sending strength and courage to his loved one. Rosemary. We have a beautiful rosemary bush here in the garden. If you smelled rosemary, you know that it has a very strong smell and also a very lasting smell. Actually, in the medieval days, they used to put rosemary sprigs inside the bouquet of the bride that was getting married. It was acting as a reference or as a reminder of love and fidelity as the lasting scent, as shall be the lasting vow of their promise of love for life. Maybe the singer is asking his lost love to remember him. So here we have the thyme. Thyme, like rosemary, also has a very strong scent. Thyme in the ancient times, thyme in the ancient times was a great antiseptic. It was used to bind up wounds, and actually the ancient Greeks would throw this in their bathtub. They thought that with thyme they could ward off melancholic feelings. Maybe here the singer is saying to his lover, don't be sad. how he uses those herbs to have send the secret message of no hard feelings, be strong, remember me, and don't be sad. So I'd like to read it to you, with some commentary of course. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Remember me to the one who lives there, for she once was a true love of mine. Tell her to make me a cambric shirt, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, without any seam nor needlework and then she'll be a true love of mine. You can't make a shirt without a seam. How will you sew on the sleeves? Tell her to wash it in yonder dry well, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, which never sprung water, nor rain never fell. And then she'll be a true love of mine. Washing a shirt in a dry well that has no water, nor never did, is pretty much an impossible task to ask of somebody. 
tell her to dry it on yonder thorn, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, which never bore blossoms since Adam was born, and then she'll be a true love of mine. Ask her to do me this courtesy, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and ask her for a like favor for me, and then she'll be a true love of mine. Have you been to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, remember me from one who lives there, for he once was a true love of mine. Now we meet the woman in the song. Let's hear her perspective on the story. Ask him to find me an acre of land, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, between the salt water and the sea land, for then he'll be a true love of mine. Ask him to plow it with a lamb's horn, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and sow it all over with one peppercorn, for then he'll be a true love of mine. If you've ever planted something in a garden, planted a large bed in a garden, to be able to sow something with a little horn is pretty much an impossible task. And especially to sow all of that with just one peppercorn? Absolutely impossible what she's asking for. Ask him to reap it with a sickle of leather, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and gather it up with a rope made of heather. For then he'll be a true love of mine. When he has done and finished his work, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, ask him to come for his cambric shirt. For then he'll be a true love of mine. There's no way that he could finish this. She set for him impossible tasks. Then the both of them say, If you say that you can't, then I shall reply, Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Oh, let me know that at least you'll try, or you'll never be a true love of mine. Love imposes impossible tasks, Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, but none more than any heart would ask. I must know you're a true love of mine fascinating. It's the impossible love. It's the impossible hoops that we set before people to be able to deserve receiving our hearts and our love. I'm sure that there was a great love between these two people, but they both had some sort of understanding that it couldn't continue. The herbs are their language to say, don't take it too hard. Let's remember this fondly and be strong and move forward. But then they're saying at the end, let me know at least that you'll try. So maybe the point is not about doing the impossible, but saying that at least you'll try to do it. There's something that this poem doesn't address in love. It certainly sets the impossible hoops for one to jump through, to prove worthy of receiving the heart, but it doesn't talk about what it means to give love. And how would you like to give love? Would you like to give love that is patient? that is kind, that isn't proud or rude or selfish? Would you like to give a love that always hopes and endures, endures all difficulties and all challenges? Is true love about what we get or is true love about what we give? What can we learn from this medieval song? Is it just a window into the way things were then, or a totally kind of vernacular approach to the expectations that most of us have in love? Is there a greater wisdom? I'd be curious to hear what you think. Go ahead and leave your answers in the comments. It's been great to spend this time with you. Wishing you all well. Stay safe during these times. Big hugs. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and keep updated for another one in a couple of weeks. See you then.